I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, and I'm JT Timmons. And today we have a ghost mail for you. Ghost Ooh. mail. You've got ghost mail. There you go. Every <laughs> single episode. We'll, yes. We'll now that. we have to do it every single episode. But yes. Ah. We have so much ghost mail to tell you guys about, so uh, we'll try to make our intros a little bit quicker, but yes. uh, JT, you have any announcements for us? Yes. Um, in the few, few episodes back, we announced the radio play. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely want to become a pair of junkies uh, to uh, listen to the first one. Um, there will be more coming if the pair of junkies love it. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be awesome. So that, and, um, let's see. Oh, also, uh, visit Savannah, Madison, do you want to tell them about visit our partnership with visit Savannah and yes. the show? Yes, it is a kind of like a, a web show of sorts. Um, so we have partnered with Visit Savannah, and we are going to be doing a series where we go around to haunted Savannah locations, do a little bit of a mini doc on them, but also to do some, you know, ghostly paranormal investigating and things like that. Uh, but our first episode, we are partnering actually as well with Pack Gun, so that we can do an episode on the Gullah Geechee culture and all of its haints and spirits and hags and actually that's what the title of the episode is is Haints, Hags, and Spirits of the Gullah Geechee I yeah. believe so um, so that should be coming out as well soon do we have a uh, a release date for that? Um, it, it's most likely, we're thinking like late July. Okay, yep, cool. Late July for that. That'll be public. That'll be to everybody. Cool. And that'll be on Visit Savannah's social media. Yep, so make sure if you want to watch that, you got to be on um, following Visit Savannah on TikTok and on Facebook, Facebook. and all that good and stuff. And they're going to drop it mainly on their YouTube. Yep, and yep. on their YouTube. So make sure to go visit, uh, oh, yeah. visit Savannah. And if you visit their uh, YouTube, you should be able to see a series of haunted... Uh, videos uh, featuring poetry by me. Oh, I, I didn't know this. Okay. Yes. That's okay. very interesting. There you go. All right. Uh, very cool. So yeah, those that's pretty fun. We also have some comments from the live stream. Uh, we are live streaming this for Para Junkies. Here we go. We got Ashley Werner. Chris doing the Estes method uh, had me dying. The answers he was getting were hilarious. She's talking about yes. <laughs> uh, the Agatha's coffee shop we did a few weeks ago. Um, when this episode drops, at least a few weeks ago. And um, women in my family interfere with radio frequency my mom and i could stand in front of a radio and make the channel go out Ooh. and someone else stands in the same spot the signal is fine i'm telling you there's some people that are just like wow. little electric yeah yeah little electric <laughs> that's so interesting uh Alexandre Machado said, ooh, there's a new ghost. That's interesting. Madison was oh, talking yes. about the new ghost uh, in the beginning yes. of the, yeah, uh, while before we the episode. Mm -hmm. While we were filming the last episode, uh, you probably see it. Debris might cut into my face because I made a face like, you know, like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it walked by right over here into the backstage area. It was kind of a Southern Belle style. I haven't oh, seen her before. Interesting. She had a big hat on and her hair was nice and curly and put up into a bun. Oh, wow. Um, and had a big floofy dress. So I'm betting anything that somebody dropped that one off uh, oh, with boy. them Fair this enough. weekend Fair because enough. we just had shows this weekend. So, yep, yep. Uh, so she's new. All right, here we go. We um, this one, this first ghost mail is from Emily Strickland. Emily, nice. yes, we've had ghost mail from her before. Ghost story submissions. 
It has been about six years since this strange occurrence happened to me. When I was around 12 years old, I shared a room with my older sister, who was 15 at the time. I had a bunk bed and will usually sleep on the inside because I was scared of the dark. My sister wouldn't keep the TV on at night, so at times I would be very paranoid of the closet that, um, that was in front of my bed. I remember this one night I woke up and saw a black figure with a coat and a hat on sitting in front of my closet, inching towards me slowly. I hid under the covers after trying to wake up my sister. To this day, I am unsure if it was a nightmare or really occurred. It felt real It felt real and feels like a memory, but it was years ago. I'm now 18 and still fear the dark. And we're starting it off strong with a hat man story. Hat man. Hat man. So good to hear from you, Hat Man. Yes, always, always here. Well, forever is the here. most common ghost, y'all. Yes. Well, you know, and I think that the the commonality of it is probably because it is a form that is so readily and e- easily identified, um, and it's so fascinating because so many people do not know anything about Hat Man or the phenomena at all, but they'll come forward with a story of seeing mm-hmm. this shadow figure with yeah. a hat, and um, somebody actually recently brought up the. Um, the uh, I believe it's the Mexican boogeyman mm. is basically yeah a, a hat man figure the uh, el el cuque uh, cuckoo I don't know how to pronounce it huh. um, but uh, he is basically a shrouded shadow figure in a long coat and oftentimes seen with a hat is he the one um, that has the bones in the bag yeah. okay yes I yeah. think Michael yeah. talked about it on on his episode maybe uh, possibly uh, yeah possibly. Hispanic yeah. horror lore. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. carries the bones of his like dead father right. or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, in a bag. Like maybe, that. maybe yeah. he did. I don't remember. Um, a heap of of rags, but in in, in shape and form, looks huh. like a, a man in 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 a long coat. Uh, yeah, I'm fascinated by how snowbally it has been. Because I think the first time we mentioned it, we were yeah. talking about it in that term of, mm-hmm. you know, some people have heard of this. You know, yeah. and now this it's is, just like, but now it seems like it's, 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 it's rampant that, yeah. that everybody and almost everybody that I tell about the hat man who's never heard of him before within that conversation come around to like a, either they themselves have had an experience mm-hmm. or somebody had relayed an experience to them that they're like, oh, interesting, you know, because I've heard, you know, the. He was wearing a bowler hat, uh, a fedora, a top hat, yeah. you know, all these things. And it's like, that's funny because even uh, the um, neighborhood watch sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the hat is, man. Is, is, is the hat man. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, this guy in a hat, you know, yeah, and right. a, a big collar, you know, and you're like, oh, it's an image that we have for a long time harbored as the mysterious yeah. being just outside of our periphery. Crazy. It's funny. I actually had a guest um, this past weekend on my tour. At the end of the tour, it's always when I get the good stories. It's because people will be like, do you take questions? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And she goes, great. I have this weird thing that's been following me since college. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so apparently she moved into her dorm. And her, her and her roommate shared a room um, in their dorm suite of sorts. And apparently... They both, on separate accounts, would always see this man standing in the in the doorway, wearing a hat and all that jazz. And they're like, he just always stood there. She's like, but the first time I saw him, I thought it was like an actual intruder. Like I thought somebody had broken into the dorm and was standing there um, because he felt so like real and like tangible. And so she's like, I didn't think anything of it after that um, until my roommate and I, after we graduated, talked about it. And we both realized we had the same experience. Well, she's like, I have moved to three different locations. And every time I move, I see him, but he gets closer to me. Mm. And recently she moved and the hat man is standing at the foot of her bed. And she like wakes up her fiance and she's like, oh my God, you, you got to see it. You got to see it. And he wakes up and there's nothing there. But she sees him perfectly clear. Wow. And I'm like, so it sounds like you have an attachment well, like mm-hmm. Hatman. But I, it brings up the new curiosity in my mind. I'm like, can Hatman be an attachment? Which I'm sure they can be. But, you know, um, they're not just this passing entity that sometimes you might see him once in your life. But... Well, and that that becomes another issue is they may not all be the same entity. 
Right. You know, uh, we, 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 we category it as a type of entity, but we've heard instances where it's spoken. Uh, we've heard instances with red glowing eyes. We've heard instances where it's, it, it attacks, where it, mm-hmm. it, where it presses forward. Um, all of these share one thing, the form, the shape. And it's possible that that shape is just so easily recognizable and easily uh, asserted that multiple entities with multiple motivations could be using it. Absolutely. Not to mention, there was a time when everybody wore a hat. That is you know, true. There was a time when hats were so commonplace. Oh, yeah. That, you know, um, and I'm kind of sad that that time went away, but. We should you, all be walking around in top hats. Or, or fedoras, yes. you know, the fact that, you know, you couldn't leave your house without your hat. You know, <laughs> I'm gone to work. Da, 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 da. All right. Thank you for that one. Let's go on to the next. Here we go. Edith Garcia, titled My Ghost Story. Hi, I stumbled on your podcast on TikTok just now. I watched the video of the lady with the nightmares. The lady with the mismatched fingers. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what it was. Um, I've had unexplained creepy things happen to me, but the one incident that truly haunts me happened when I was around 14, 15 years old. Let me paint the scene. My dad had remodeled my childhood home. He opened the floor plan to, um, I'm sorry, Uh, Yeah, he opened the floor plan to make our living room bigger and left one room downstairs, my room. My parents, little brother, and a family relative all slept upstairs in their own rooms. It was around 3 a.m. one night when I heard a knock on our front door. I was sound asleep. I'm a heavy sleeper, but this one night, um, but this one night, the knocks on the front door woke me. I decided to go see who was knocking. I looked through the peephole my dad installed it was a huge peephole where you didn't have to squint to see and i saw a figure it looked like a girl so i decided to look through the normal peephole and to my horror i saw a fully naked girl bleeding from her skull i completely froze not knowing what to do i literally stopped breathing in that moment I honestly don't know how long I stood there. She finally turned around and started walking down the porch stairs. In that moment, I decided to go peek through our curtains, and then she turned around and looked at the house. I froze. She started walking away, but I was in shock. I was in shock to see she was not walking. She was gliding down the driveway. She went down the street. I ran to the back of the house to peek through our kitchen window and she disappeared. I ran to my room and didn't sleep that night. The next morning, I was talking to my mom, asking her if she heard knocking the night before. She said no. I felt relieved. I thought maybe I dreamt it. But soon after she said, I didn't hear it, but Lalo heard, uh, but Lalo heard knocking last night. He said he looked through the upstairs window, but didn't see anyone. I get goosebumps just thinking about that night. Mm. Mm. So there is, it reminds me of a ghost story of the bloody woman, um, which uh, is in Fort Riley, Kansas. Uh, And and this is an entity, a a type of spirit that I think uh, occurs multiple places. Um, Wounded ghosts. Uh. Many times a wounded ghost is the last projection of a person who's been murdered. And what they're doing is they're looking for help. Mm -hmm. And they will oftentimes go door to door to door. So um, uh, in the case of uh, Fort Riley, Kansas, uh, this woman was apparently attacked on on the trail in the wilderness, uh, ran to the first building she could find and began to beat on every door down an alleyway. But I've heard that kind of story before, a bloody person who is who is trying to get attention, trying to get help. Um, oftentimes they had already been dead by time. The spirit got to the door. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're now dealing with kind of a residual haunting. Um, usually when a ghost wears its injuries, it is in the moment of their death Yeah. or, you know, it is connected to the moment of that. So you see a bloody person or you see somebody who is, who has a wound. They are associating that trauma and that trauma is actually fueling the haunting. So it, it feels like that might be what you're dealing with is, is perhaps this girl had been murdered at some location nearby. Um, and it may have been uh, 
kicked up with the remodeling. Uh, we talk sure. about that a lot. When, when mm-hmm. you remodel, when mm-hmm. you change the energy flow of a, of a building, when you, when you change things, spirit, spiritual energy kicks up. And whether that is an event that happened at that location or near that location, who's to say? But it is enough to suggest that you might be dealing with a victim looking for help. Yeah. And uh, your home was in the path of it. And when that when that remodeling happened, it might have been more of a beacon call, like a, a light up for the spirit to to reassess and reass, uh, re- represent itself. Yeah, usually whenever I've seen spirits that have the injuries, a lot of times it's because they are aware of the injuries that they sustained at their time of death. Um, because a lot of spirits they don't continue having the injuries because right. they had no idea what you know, like if they die quickly or suddenly, whatever it is, uh, they have no idea what happened to them exactly. So there's no ability to acquire it. But, you know, what I find interesting is, I don't know why this thought came into my head, is that I think there might be an influx of these bloody women spirits, especially coming out of the times of serial killers Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Um, really, really horrific crimes during the 70s into the 80s and even into the 90s in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Um, Because a lot of times these serial killers lived in plain sight and people did escape. And oftentimes they had really horrific injuries. So I could totally see us having these incidents, you know, of seeing victims running door to door because they're in a neighborhood trying right. to find trying help. To ha- find help. Yeah. Um, and their heightened uh, emotional content just stained that, right. whether they survived or didn't survive. Exactly. Exactly. So, hmm. yeah, that was kind of my thir- first thought is like, because I don't know where you're located, but maybe you lived in a neighborhood that might have had one of those particular perpetrators living there at some point, and that could have. But I, I would say. The the thing that got me was that it glided, mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. it it you know went down the um it went out of the driveway down the street. That to me doesn't sound like a spirit. Well, or like a ghost. Okay, like, so you got to remember right? too. It could look like it's gliding because maybe the ground was higher up at some point, uh-huh. and they're gliding over what would have been the original. Or road. like I said, it could have been already dead when it first arrived okay. and it's being pulled by intention. It's not oh, running. Okay. It doesn't think it's alive. Oh. You know, it, it is moving with intent. So it's, you know, the difference, and that's a, a really good point. Seeing a ghost that walks mm-hmm. versus seeing a ghost that glides. Sure. Uh, because both exist in, in, in common parlance. People talk about, you know, mm-hmm. it was floating, the floating the ghost. The floating ghost, yeah. The reason why... Uh, certain ghosts float and certain ghosts walk is simply the intent of its existence. Why is it moving to where it's going? Is it reenacting its existence? Is it, or is it an entity? Is it a, mm-hmm. is it, you know, because an entity doesn't have to walk. It knows it doesn't have to walk. It doesn't have physicality. Uh, it doesn't have a physical presence. Um, Something that's also interesting is you very rarely hear about naked ghosts. Right. Yeah. Uh, naked ghosts are usually victims mm-hmm. yeah. because they did not choose to be naked. As a matter of fact, uh, um, when, when people oftentimes kill themselves, they, don't, they, they will dress themselves so that when people find them, they will not be ashamed of their bodies. You know, uh, to see a naked ghost is to suggest that it's a victim. Uh, a bloody naked ghost is nine times out of ten going to be... A a victim, victim of an assault, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which leads even more into my thought process. Of, right. You know, yeah. that it's somebody who escaped out of a house and is running door to door. Yeah. Um, because you see that a lot. If you've ever watched this show, I Survived a Serial Killer, most of those Yum. people had that exact experience where they were stuck in a house somewhere. They got out. Most of them were naked and bleeding everywhere. And they right. ran to a house, banging on the door, being like, let me in. Yes. I got to, you know. Exactly. So. You know, oh yeah, I, I'm surprised we don't hear more s- stories about spirits from the '70s coming on to the show, just because of the sheer amount of heinous crime that occurred in the '70s and '80s. Well, you know, and we've talked about this before: is some people will encounter ghosts and not realize they're ghosts at all. That is true. You know, if true. if if the ghost has a a strong sense of self, then they will just look like an out of time dressed person. 
And uh, the problem with, with modern fashion is if you dress like somebody from the 70s, you just dressed like, you know, yeah. a quirky person. And so you, you might encounter spirits all the time uh, and not register it in your mind because they are just present. All right. Let's jump on over to the next one. Um, all right. This is called The Hand. The oh, hands. yeah. Sent in by Eniloge. That's the best way the I can claw. say it. Yep. All right. When I was 20 years old, I lived in a small guest house in my mother's backyard. One night, I was jolted awake by a sudden brightness of the light in my room. Confused, I rubbed my eyes and tried to make sense of what was happening. That's when I saw it. A giant black hand, non-human in appearance, lying at the foot of my bed. The fingers were long and wet, resembling those of the infamous Slender Man. I felt a cold sweat break out on my skin as I realized I was not alone in the room. In a panic, I threw my blanket over my hand and jumped out of the bed. Oh, I threw my blanket over the hand and jumped out of bed, heart racing. I tried to convince myself that what I saw was just a figment of my imagination, but the memory of that moment stayed with me for years. Fast forward five years, and I was now a, mar I was now a married and a mom of two-year-old son. My husband worked out of town, so I often found myself alone with my child in our apartment. One night, my son fell asleep beside me in bed. Suddenly, he tapped me on the shoulder and whispered, Mommy. Startled, I sat up and asked him what's wrong. That's when he pointed to the foot on uh, uh, the foot of the bed and said, Mommy, there's a hand. Oof. My heart skipped a beat as I looked to where he was pointing, my eyes widening in horror. It was the same spot where I had seen the monstrous hand years ago, only we lived at an apartment and not my mom's. I tried to reassure my son that there was nothing to fear, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister was lurking in the room with us. I turned on the lights and waited until my son fell back asleep before I dared to close my eyes again. The memory of that night and the one years prior still haunts me to this day. Could my son have been the same creature, uh, have seen the same creature that I had, or was it all coincidence? I may never know, but the fear I felt that night will stay with me forever. So, are we talking like Adam's family hand, like moves on its own, or is those do long, we know wet fingers, long wet fingers kind of slender man? Yeah. So, is it black? Black, did you say? Okay. So, yep. I've, I feel like I've heard of something of this nature. It's, it, it, it's very familiar to me. Um, uh, the first thing that, that comes to mind is whenever you see the pieces of something, uh, what you're really looking at is something coming through. Right. It's pushing through into our reality um, and, and only has enough force to reach. You know, literally it's being cut off by the confines of our reality. Uh, I'm trying to think there's something very familiar about this hand. It yeah. Might be Middle Eastern. Oh yes. I think I, I kinda uh, know what you're talking about. It's um But it's it's yeah. Uh, I, I, I'll 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 take a look through my books and see <laughs> if I can't figure it we'll out. We'll reconvene on we'll the We'll reconvene action. on on the actual hand. But uh the fact that your son saw the same thing you saw does suggest that there is a presence that is uh, observable mm -hmm. and therefore you should be on some form of guard mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if it's still at that level, it doesn't seem like it's progressed. Um, the fact that it's at the foot of your bed is very interesting to me as well. So, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think I'm just going to have to look up in, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah it, because it does. It sounds. I. I. I I'm. I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm like, I've. I've heard of this. That this a hand, just the hand, black, um, wet, wet. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's. It, it, and, and and it kind of creates this notion of an interdimensional being right. trying to reach into our dimension, piercing through the veil, and just being like 
present, I guess, but mm-hmm. not strong enough to be fully present. Um, what it sounded like to me is that because it's the, it sounds like the exact same entity, uh, is that you might have some sort of an attachment after the first encounter, and that's what's keeping it able to redo this same experience mm. um, with your child. And because that is your child, that is blood, it's, it's very, inherent. yeah, yeah. He, your son might have the same experience multiple times as well. Right. Um, someone in your family at some point might have attempted a conjure or tried to pull something through, possibly in a place that you were living. There's a lot of, a lot of open ends to that. Yeah. But the fact that uh, you and your son both saw this thing definitely puts it in the realm of present. Yeah. So, you know, um, you might be looking into getting some wards of some type. That's what I would say. You know, uh, finding something that mm-hmm. you feel confident protects you spiritually. Um, yeah. That's a that's a that's a good one. That's a weird yeah. one. Uh, that, I'm, that's <laughs> I'm interested to know like what the end of the hand looked like, like uh, opposite of the fingers. Like, right. What, right. Is it was cut it off? Meat is it hanging yeah. out of well, it? Was, was it literally flat? at the wrist? Well, you know? that's what I was asking. Is it just is rusting? It, is, is it like, like moving? Yeah. <laughs> is it like Adam's family hand where it's like oh, okay, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. like yeah. moving on its own, on its own, or is there some form of Right. Recognizable yeah. attachment. Right. Wrists. Are you looking it up, Madison? I, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure it's out. Okay, we can look it up after. We can bring it yeah. up in the next episode. I just wanted the, to see if episode. a quick Google popped yeah. up anything, but sure. a lot of it's, you know, oh, spooky stories to tell in the dark. Yes. So it's yes. like. The bloody well, the severed hand is a. Well, the reason why the thing from Adam's family exists yeah. is because the hand that moves on its own. Monotone is scary. There's a there's real fast. I just kind of want to put this out to the listeners to see if the, anybody remembers this because I've been trying to find it forever. It's a cassette tape that I used to listen to when I was a kid. I mean, Lanny and I would listen to it. We were like really really young. She was like three or four. I was like five or six, and um, it was this guy who read the bloody arm, and he would he had this weird accent. Like I think it was like a a new a New England accent. He was like the bloody arm. The bloody it, he yeah. would say the bloody arm. The bloody That's what he would do, and, I, and we would all go the bloody arm. Like as a family driving, yeah. you know, to the mountains or something. Yeah, the bloody arm. But anyway, if anyone knows that, I would love to find that. That would be so cool. Um, oh, Lord. Yeah, I tried to. I asked my parents a while back, and they were like, "We we don't remember who that was, but it was great. It was like <laughs> some of the best storytelling ever." It was just some random man in his garage recording be. cassette tapes of creepy <laughs> stories. And he comes mom would have bought one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my son would love this. All right. The here we go. Am. So, the bloody am. A few weeks ago, I received a call from a, uh, from a fan named L. And uh, L told me a pretty crazy story. Okay, and I wanted to read it to y'all. She sent it in. I asked her to send it in via ghost mail so I could read it to y'all instead of just tell you because I'm not like a talented storyteller like Chris or anything. So here we go. Hi, JT. I literally just got off the phone with you. And thank you for listening to me and my stories. I personally like calling because my brain works too fast for my fingers. So I hope you recognize this story. Some background on me is that my family is from the UK, my mom is from England, and my dad is from Northern Ireland. They came to Georgia because of my dad's job just before I was born. We have been going to St. Simon's Island for years, and I visited Savannah with my Girl Scout troop in the fifth grade. My sister and I have been obsessed with the paranormal for years, and is one, and it is one of the main things we bond over. I have had many paranormal experiences, but there are three main experiences I want to talk to you guys about. I am currently listening to the Savannah's Demon House podcast from last year as I write. For your notes, I found your page and podcast on TikTok talk with the bodies found on Broughton Street told by Sister Pat. Awesome. Thank you for the notes. I appreciate that. In a way, this podcast kind of relit an interest I have had for ages. I just finished my second year at UGA, so it was perfect timing for a summer reset. The first story, 
I want to tell is an experience I have had recently. I don't remember which episode it was, but I was listening to the podcast and heard that if you think you have a spirit that is trying to get your attention in your home, you can address it by saying you can either pay rent or leave. <laughs> The house I am living in has had several tenants living in it, so who knows what is, actu uh, what is actually here. Regardless, I have felt an energy that is quiet since I have lived here, but is a bit louder when I am alone. Think of it like music. When my two roommates are home, the energy is a pianissimo, uh, very quiet to where you almost can't tell it's there, but when I am alone, it is more of a Pianissimo, uh, okay, so pianissimo, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, well, I have had this feeling, uh, I have had this feeling, this energy for a while, but what the hell? So I said, if you are here and you want to stay, you have to start paying rent, she said. Made me feel better because the energy stayed really, really quiet. One day during finals week, I was cleaning my room. I clean, I clean my room when I am stressed and felt that I needed to take a break from studying. When I was done, I found a total of $64, which initially I was thinking was money I had misplaced and was glad that I found it since I currently work at a fish store and it doesn't pay a lot. A few weeks later, I am cleaning my room again because finals are over and I want to declutter and I found $21. <laughs> so now I am getting suspicious, but the energy isn't bothering me, so I don't investigate until last night. My leopard gecko, Pickle, oh. <laughs> that's a great name, has been picky about eating and as a paranoid pet parent... I had called the vet and he had suggested potentially getting x-rays. I asked him to wait while I pulled up my bank account since I don't get paid until next week. I knew I probably wouldn't have more than seven bucks, but needed to see how much I had so I could plan accordingly. To my surprise, I had $433 in my bank account. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> At first, I thought it was rent from my savings automatically applied to my account so I could pay my landlord, but $433 is not enough for rent, and rent, uh, oh, and B, rent doesn't enter my account until just before the next month. I checked the transaction history and nothing. Needless to say, I think the fourth resident in the house enjoys your podcast as well. <laughs> you know, El, I think you're making me think twice about the jokes that I make on this podcast. Um, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure what you're referring to is a joke that I, I make sometimes about ghosts being bad roommates and that they need to pay rent or whatever. But I, I do, I do worry a little bit of... Um, that you might have entered a contract with that a spirit. That is classic Faye behavior. The, literally what I, thank you, Chris, for bringing it <laughs> hey up. Faye daddy. Yes, so here's your Faye daddy um, hey moment. Daddy. Um, yeah, that is so Faye behavior uh, because a lot of times they will present you with large sums of things, whatever it is that you want. So if it's money, they will- Especially if you ask for it. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> if you ask for it, they will present it to you really quickly but they want something in return. So I get very nervous that you're finding these large sums of money sporadically, especially that they're appearing in your bank account sporadically, that something's not going to come collecting. Although I'm very intrigued because- I am also a little intrigued as well. Well, even even in the uh, concept of, of Faye, you actually spoke the conditions. So it can't create conditions post. Sure. If you said, if you give me this, you get this, and then that happens, that exchange happens. The trick is, you said if you want to stay, <laughs> you have to pay, which begs the question, what does stay mean? Right. Um, but yeah. uh, that kind of, it's just interesting because it, it falls into classic stories. The reason why people believe that fairies grant wishes mm -hmm. is because of this contract is this idea of asking for something and the fate delivering it but all contracts with the preternatural supernatural come at a price usually a pretty hefty one um however if we're dealing with just something as simple as 
it needing a place to belong in our world and our realm and is now finding means to do so cash it in yeah you know yeah. Like, uh, uh, we should all be so lucky to have a a, a money a, a money ghost app. you know yeah. <laughs> uh i would i would really be interested in that but um uh and also you might have a crow a what a, a crow. crow a crow <laughs> crows bring you shinies crows crows bring you right into valuables. our bank account though Direct that one deposit? that one that one really uh stumps me because <laughs> even even dealing with Faye. Yeah. Or ghosts, even. Yeah. Uh, the electronic transfer of funds. That's <laughs> wild. That's so yeah. much more that's, Faye, that's, though. That's, that's, that's peculiar. That's wild. Um, it's just Faye are such tricky little things. And so it's... But um, I, I don't know many Faye encounters with electronics in that means. I understand interfering with electronics. I don't... I don't completely understand uh, taking pro- advantage of it. Although, yeah, they're, they, they're progressing. They they're could be have a, a, there's a DeVry Institute for Faye, you know, where they go and learn computer science and things. That's going to be the next sweatshirt is DeVry University, <laughs> Faye, for Faye. For Faye. <laughs> it's got a little wow. Faye with a cap and gown. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's yeah. cute. Well, she sent some more stories and we'll get into Ooh. those um, in, in uh, coming uh uh, episodes, ghost mail episodes, but I just wanted to get, I wanted to tell you all that because yeah, no, I that's thought a that great was, story. It's a great it's, story. It's so interesting. It's fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm utterly fascinated. And I want to see where it goes. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I, buy a lottery ticket. Yes. Oh, buy a lottery ticket. Buy a lottery ticket. If, if you've got, if you've got something, uh, you know, engineering, uh, uh, uh cash coming to you, oh. buy a lottery ticket. But for the rest of you, who are listening to this. <laughs> Don't enter into contracts with Don't unknown beings. Don't enter into contracts with Faye, please. Unless they pay well. No. Unless no. they pay well. There's a reason why Rumpelstiltskins <laughs> exist. I'm just saying. Rumpelstiltskin exists? Well, no. Well, like the story. The story oh, the story. Of okay. It. I was like, yeah, there's a, no, 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 no. I was like, babe. Jeez. Oh, he's the he's the worst. Anyways. Um, yeah. There's a reason why that story exists. It's... Yeah. Um, it, they, 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 they because they're to, typical of yeah. that story. Yeah, you know, Adam Rumpelstiltskin is a good example because he gave gold. Yeah, you know, he he provided gold for this for a child. Well, exactly, basically, and that was a big one, by the way. Uh, they generally want babies, they so do. Uh, <laughs> they do want babies. Beware, beware. Well, yeah, and that was why you know there's like old old superstitions that you have to leave out a little something for the fae so that they don't snatch your baby in the middle of the night yeah. because especially in Ireland and it, it could have easily have been because of the high infant mortality rate oh, that, sure. that these that these beliefs I also be. I also want an update on pickle I also would like a photo of Pickle. Please. Yes, please send yes. a pic- photo and an pickle. update, please. Pickle. 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 All right. And for the last one, this comes from Parajunkie Ann Ellis. Okay. It is titled The Sorrel Weed House. Ooh. You know, our favorite haunted house uh, in Savannah. One of them. All right. Hey, y'all. Just love your podcast. This is a video from The Sorrel Weed House last October. The best time to go to the Sorrel Absolutely. Weed House. Absolutely. This was at the start of our paranormal investigation as our docent was still giving us information before the actual start of the investigation. You will see the cabinet door open by itself as well as a loud moan. The moan was not heard at the time. Our guide said the door opening was not paranormal, but surprised it happened the same time as the moan. Also noted moan, uh, also noted moan happened same time the date of Matilda's death is brought up. I have a clip from the, uh, from my phone, but this was recorded off their tape as it shows the moan and door opening. We'll send you both. Would love to hear your thoughts, intelligent or residual. Ignore first picture as it uh, did not have sound on. Thanks, Anne. All right, here's, I'm going to bring that over. And uh, you. Debria, you can just cut the um, video into it, please. All right. I put my reading glasses on. To find out this information, Matilda would go and ask her most entrusted enslaved person. Matilda's most entrusted enslaved person's name was Molly. The third location we are going to investigate tonight is the upper level of the carriage house right across the bank. 
We did a church clerk investigative there. I will bring you up there myself. I'll pull you around, give you a little bit more information. Upstairs in the carriage house, Molly had her own private bedroom. And on March 27th, 1860, Tilda was looking for Molly all throughout the house. Couldn't find her anywhere. The last place she thought to search for her was upstairs in Molly's private bedroom. Yeah, that's not paranormal. <laughs> oh boy. Hold on, there it is again. Hold on. Couldn't find her anywhere. The last place she thought to search for her was upstairs in Molly's private bedroom. Yeah, that's not paranormal. What? Okay. All right, hold on. There's a, there's another video. There's in Molly's private bedroom. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's in Molly's private bedroom. All right, yeah, for the not... for the live stream and pair of junkies, let's try to get it. I know I have a lot of compression on this, but hold on. Here's the moan. There's in Molly's private bedroom. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not. Okay, so I actually, it's so interesting that this is coming up because yesterday I was giving a com uh, Chris's comedy tour, actually. So if you're visiting Savannah and you want to take a comedy tour that Chris wrote, um, that I was doing that yesterday and the driver's wife came on board to watch it because she's a concierge. She used to be a docent at the Sorrel Weed House and um, would spend a lot of time there. She had so many paranormal encounters in the house. And we're going to bring her on to the, onto the show eventually. But she was telling me about this one encounter that she had with Matilda specifically. Um, so she is uh, Claire Sentient. So uh, she basically can feel energy a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Pretty much, she was in the house one morning unlocking stuff, and she felt that Matilda was there, and she was trying to say something, but she couldn't. So she said, listen, I'm going to be meditating tonight. If you have something you want to say to me, come through in that. So she said that she, within five minutes of kind of getting into that meditative zone that she gets into, she immediately felt Matilda's presence come through and say, I don't like what you say about me and Francis. And so she goes, she's like, he loved me. And so if you haven't ever taken the Sorrel Weed House tour, um, basically they talk about how Francis and Matilda kind of had a little bit of a tumultuous relationship and things like that, that Francis cheated, which wasn't uncommon for the time period. But according to her, Matilda does not like people saying that mm. at all wow. and after she changed it saying that her and francis were happily married but you know francis you know was a man at the times and yada 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 matilda came through again during her meditation saying i like the change and um interesting mm -hmm. and so basically it's interesting that they're talking about Matilda in this situation because it makes me wonder if there's other things that they say about Matilda that well, she's not pleased with and she's trying to be like drawing attention away from it. Mm -hmm. And it's probably worth another deep dive into the Sorrel story because that sounded like weeping to it me. It did. Yeah. And there is a story of like. Lucinda, mm -hmm. Matilda's sister, yeah. who suffered yellow fever in that house, died in that house, suffering in that house. Uh, I'm wondering if that's not Lucinda and instead of Matilda. Also, that's, that, that's, a, that's a killer point, but also why did, the per, why did the docent say that the cabinet opening wasn't paranormal? Because in old houses in Savannah, the floors are not even. The furniture is oftentimes <laughs> antique and the latches do not hold. Um, my guess is the reason why she said that was because it was such a common occurrence that it was hard for her to, oh. to negotiate okay. and, she, and to, to control the crowd so that they're not all staring at a cabinet for the rest of the night. Exactly, and panicking. <laughs> you know, and, and, and being like, that's it, this is it, and, you know, and yeah. camping out there. So um, there's a number of reasons, but the truth of the matter is, uh, cabinets opening uh, huh. could could be paranormal, but also if it's a common enough occurrence, if the cabinet itself doesn't latch very well. Um, although, Lord knows, so many ghost stories in Savannah start with cabinets, mm -hmm. you know, creaking open. Yeah, 
I will tell you too, just for the listeners being like, oh, it's just SRL weed house rigging things. They do not do no, that. They, don't. No. they are so against that in particular. So I just want to clarify that I don't think it's them rigging it at all. It's right. If, if it was rigged, the docent would have played it off as a, I don't know. Or a, right. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, so for the docent that's to immediately true. say that's that's not paranormal. And for no one to hear the moan. And for and no one to hear the moan. And the moan to only come through in the right, frequency. Right, because I think everybody yeah. would have freaked out if right. they heard that moan. <laughs> everybody Dude. would have been like, what was that? Exactly. exactly. It's just weird. It's yeah. really weird. And it weird, does sound y'all. like uh, the weeping of a, uh, of a woman. I agree Absolutely. with you, Chris. I think that could be it. And it's... So that happened in what looks like one of the main parlor areas because there's a double parlor in the Sorrel Weed House. Mm -hmm. And they have a photo that is of somebody who looks like they have a deformed face standing in that doorway. And I'm pretty sure it's that exact doorway. And I've always thought that that's Lucinda. So it's interesting that you bring that up because um, I always thought that photo was Lucinda because she died of yellow fever. And yellow fever is such a deteriorating disease that it's not out of the realm of possibility mm-hmm. that her features would have just and gotten a lot of people have seen a veiled woman a right. woman wearing a veil and and some people wonder if that's not listen to covering mm-hmm. the deformities covering the, the the marks and the markings because that was the other thing was there was no real treatment for yellow fever outside of bleeding um there was no way to be comfortable and so and this, of course, comes down to legend. You know, yeah. what people say is that she would wander because she couldn't lie down. She couldn't feel comfortable. So she'd walk around the house crying, yeah. wearing this veil. And so a lot of people see this picture. But then on the other side, people are like, well, it was Matilda's sister. Sure. So Matilda could have easily been in mourning wearing a veil. Right. You know, and that could be Matilda. Um, uh, famously, the story is that Matilda threw herself off the yes. building. But there's some evidence and indication that it wasn't that building. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it was the, they had moved out of that building at the time of Matilda's death. And it was actually, I want to say the next door over mm-hmm. or something to that effect. There's a lot of conversation to be had sure. about the ghosts of the Sorrel Weed House, but that, that crying, that's, that's crazy. Compelling. That's, that's compelling. That's, that's very extremely compelling. compelling. And they, it, so like, I'm glad you mentioned Madison that, that it wasn't rigged because a lot of other people could be saying that they added that moaning into the video or whatever, but it's in both, and sent both the videos, the one that she recorded and the one that they recorded. And it was mm-hmm. the same moan. That's yeah, the, the crazy moan. thing. It, it, was, it was, and that nobody captured on two cameras. Interacted or reacted to it. Yeah. Right. It was captured on two cameras. I mean, Sorrel Weed, the Sorrel Weed House, they're good friends of ours. We, we would, I would personally put the name of this podcast behind their, their legitness, you know, um, uh, because it is, uh, they're all about their spirits. They, very haunted house. Yeah. Well, they, they record record 24 7 yeah those cameras are specifically installed not for security purposes but for ghost (laughs) purposes and so uh, for that exact reason because weird things like that happen um thank you Anne. absolutely yeah uh so yeah i'm definitely leaning more on your side now chris now i'm thinking harder into it because matilda also a lot of times what i hear about her people love to paint her as just this you know, sad, sad entity, but I see her as more of the lady of the house. She was very regal in a lot of yeah. uh, instances. Uh, and, and I mean, if you, if you bought into the, she discovered the affair and took her own life, that kind of concept of sorrow there, right. that, that, you know, that drove her to, to kill herself. But at the same time, there is, and you know, the whole Lucinda story kind of comes late in the game for almost anybody. Um, and hard to even, get a hold of like mm-hmm. it's not a commonly talked of thing that there was a first wife and it was mm-hmm. the sister of Matilda but, uh, which is also not uncommon too a lot of people were like oh I was like well no oftentimes within families when when a family member dies the oftentimes brothers will marry the sister-in-law to keep up the family mm-hmm. you know uh, practice and and vice versa. And there's also a lot of evidence to support that Matilda may have had bipolar disorder and postpartum depression, um, which could explain some of the erratic behavior Mm -hmm. that we see with her as a spirit. Um, But in that situation, it sounds a little bit more like Lucinda, especially considering there's a photo that 
leans more on the side that it is Lucinda. But yeah, yeah we, we should definitely do another deep we dive take a on look, the yeah. Sorrel <laughs> Weed really house. There's should. so much to unpack with that house. Every single time I look at it again, it just is like new things that mm-hmm. nobody even thought about. So, um, but yeah. Thank you guys so much, though, for sending in your ghost mail. It's always interesting every single time. And especially the videos and the photos, we love getting those. They are always so interesting. Um, But if you have ghost mail that you want to send us, go ahead and send it over to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. But with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And stay spooky, y'all.